Hey, what's up? It's Marquez Brownlee, AKA MKBHD, and my Skillshare course has just dropped. So this is just all about how I make videos. So it's pretty extensive, everything from how I shoot, to edit, to script. It actually shows a lot of exclusive behind the scenes of how we worked on the specific S21 Ultra review in case you wanna see that. But there's a lot to it, and hopefully it can help you get started on making your own stuff. So without any further ado, Let's take a little sneak peek. Now we've got our visuals, we've got our script. Now we have to get into actually shooting the video. So this is gonna be what our typical shoot style looks like. You've seen, you know, this is the setup, the, the camera's in front of me. I will literally have the notes right in front of me, like on my lap, just like that, hidden, so I can reference them and read them and, and not forget what to say. But uh, yeah, let's let's take a look around the studio, how we use some of these sets, and then how you can apply it to what you're doing. All right, so now we're over here in uh, what I'd call the expanded gear closet. Used to be just a closet, then a bigger little wardrobe thing. Now it's the gear room, basically. Moving up, it's fun. So I, I think I'm gonna just talk about the gear fundamentals, because at the end of the day, yes, we use a lot of different equipment, but there's reasons why we use and have each one of these things, and it comes down to a fundamental reason. So like I mentioned, we always want a wide angle lens. That's like sort of my primary. They say date cameras, marry the lenses. I'm a huge fan of Sigma's wide angle zooms. We use zooms a lot more than primes nowadays for the convenience, but this is the 24 to 35. It's a cine lens as well. They make a stills version, but it's a wide angle zoom. Anything wide angle and versatile for you, maybe you find you're cool with 24 millimeters all the time, that's fine. But I love a wide angle zoom. Then I have what I'll call my medium telephoto. And I kind of have a go-to from every one of these categories, despite how much stuff we have. Zeiss Otis 55, very sharp, very fast, very bright lens, quality stuff. Then lastly, I always have a, a macro lens. There's a lot of macro shots you'll see interspersed in the videos. And the go-to, one of the greatest lenses of all time, in my opinion, Canon's 100 millimeter f2.8 macro. Super, super tight focal distances on things so you can get the tiniest little details of things and shoot them from far away. Love this lens. And so that sort of trio is my go-to. A lot of these other lenses fall in the same category, but the point is a wide angle zoom, a versatile sort of do everything lens for me, a medium telephoto and a macro. There's also other cameras we use for other things. Some are a little bit lighter weight so we can shoot in smaller environments and shoot handheld with them with car videos and sort of stuff like that. I think our main focus with camera stuff, like I said, is they upgrade over time. The tech gets better and better over time. We might not have the same camera for very long, but high quality, easy to shoot, easy to use. Long battery life is great too. And then the rest of this gear room is just batteries and filters and various little things that you pick up. The more time you spend shooting video, the more you'll find things like circular polarizing filters, ND filters, all the stuff that you sort of slowly add to your arsenal is great sometimes. You don't necessarily need them all the time, but they're nice to have. All right, now let's get out of this terrible sounding room to talk about good sound. I feel like every video, oh, it sounds so much better. A great video is nothing without great sound, right? So my number one audio fundamental is get the microphone as close to the subject as possible. That is the absolute number one rule. So if you have a lav mic, something might go underneath your shirt, you try to get it close to the subject, try to get it as close to the mouth as possible. Or if you're shooting with what I use, which is a shotgun mic, no matter what shotgun you use, it'll sound better when it's closer to your mouth. So every setup I use is designed to try to get that mic as close to me as possible. A lot of times for me, that's under slinging it so that the area behind the mic is carpeted and much smaller. But generally, just get it close to you. That's the best thing you can do. The last thing I wanna do is put the mic on the camera. And then lights. It's well lit typically in this room, in this studio, but we often add a lot of lights to sort of get that cinematic look. So we have a key light. Any lighting tutorial you watch is gonna break down the fundamentals of three-point lighting. And that's, I mean, it's a YouTube video you could watch. It's probably a Skillshare class you can take but generally we just like to keep the lighting as focused and real as possible. So three point lights are a great place to start and then you can sort of mess with practicals and all sorts of other stuff from there. Now I'm talking about fundamentals here because at the end of the day, 
it's almost impossible to replicate any gear setup you might see around the internet. But when I say fundamentals, if you look at a smartphone today with the three lenses on it, and you can probably get as close to your face as possible with that and a microphone and shoot a pretty good looking video. You wanna get the light in the right place. That's also really important. They're powerful cameras, but you don't want the light behind you. You want the key to be facing you, generally things like that. But I've seen really great videos made in the last few years on just a phone with no mic, with voiceover just in the phone itself, edited and uploaded entirely from the phone. So as long as you have those fundamentals of have the lenses you need, have the focal lengths you need, have the mic nearby, and have the lights in the right places, you're on a good start. Now, I know I promised a little specific behind the scenes with our exact gear setup, so that's what we're gonna do. Let's take a look at how I made the Alexi S21 Ultra video. Here we have the exact set that we used to shoot Galaxy S21 Ultra A-Roll. Now, I'm gonna go through everything here with you. Again, keep in mind the fundamentals, but I'll go through the exact specific gear because a lot of people wanna see that too. What I'm holding in my hand is a remote to start this whole process. This is an aperture remote because we have a bunch of lights up here in the ceiling that are all wired to just shoot straight up and give us nice soft light coming down. This, this isn't even in the fundamentals. This is just something we spent a lot of time on as video nerds and built into our studio. So when I press this, this button, it's just gonna tell us lights off, lights on. And that's just kind of the environment light. It's the environment light for the room and it's on the background here. So we've got Andrew sitting in. You can, uh, you can see the setup sort of built around him at the moment. So the fundamentals right here are he's sitting in the chair and the camera's sitting right in front of him and we've got the wide angle all the way wide at 24 right here, which is great. The key light on him, which was on me, is the sky panel S60. This is a big, colorful, really soft light. Uh, I say colorful because it can do RGB and all this fun stuff, but it's pretty much just white light at the moment. And it's got the soft box so that the light is softly, evenly falling on his face. It's a pretty standard fundamental. If you can get a light source as big as your window, that will be softer than if you just have a point light. That's a little harsh. We've got one more aperture back here. That's sort of filling in and adding light to his edge. You might call it a rim light, a shoulder light, something like that but it gives him a little bit of separation from the background. And that's why I had this like little light curving around my shoulder there. And that put together with the top light is just, that's all the lights for the video. Pretty simple three point light look. Then I have this uh, flag up here, call them flags. You can call them whatever you want, but basically they're just to block light. So this is blocking the overhead light from just shining directly on my hair. And we're just keeping it simple on the subject to just the key light and the background. Enough about lighting. There's a microphone in front of him, and this is the Undersling shotgun mic that I talked about. It's the Sennheiser MKH416. I'd say I married this mic. I've had this in my arsenal for five, six, seven years, something like that. It's a very well-known, popular mic, and it's, it's my favorite ever. Sounds great. And it's as close to him as I could possibly get without getting in the frame. So it's right up underneath, and the only thing behind the mic is just carpet. So it sounds great. Lastly, I mean, you've got the subject in sharp tack focus. The camera's plugged in for power. Everything else is plugged in for power. And you've got the props behind that are generally just set design. So there's a computer behind. There's a little bit of a plant and mic and keyboard and stuff like that. The Tesla surfboard looks pretty sweet. And the art's not so bad too. But all of that put together gives you gray wall background, A-roll set, Galaxy S21 Ultra. You've seen it here first. So a video making day for us, I kind of separate the schedule for this team into different types of days. We have production days and non-production days, but a day of filming a video from top to bottom can look any number of ways, but it's a bunch of hours of different types of shooting based on what's in the script. So our A-roll set is typically the fastest setup actually, unless we're going crazy with Easter eggs, but that might be 25, 30 minutes to set everything up, then we shoot it. But B-roll, it's typically the team going off and seeing that script and deciding what would look best for it and then shooting it. So at any one given time, you might have me shooting first person shots on one side. You could have Vin in the studio with a little dark mode going on, shooting some slider shots, getting a little more dynamic. And then you'll have Brandon in the robot room setting up the robot as we start to put all these pieces together like a big puzzle to make the final video. A common question is how long does it all take to make? 
for example, the Galaxy S21 Ultra review, if we started at 10 in the morning, it was done being shot by like 6 p.m., but then I was done editing by like 3 a.m., so that process was pretty long. But yeah, it really depends on the video. Some videos are actually pretty short and they happen in one day. And we go off script all the time. Uh, I think a lot of people, like I said, get really beholden to like a shot list. Our shot list is very much just the text and any way that we can convene and show the thing is fine. A lot of times we're in the middle of something, like Vin will be doing the slider shot with the ring light and then we go, hey, wait a second, that's a thumbnail right there, isn't it? And then we just go all in on making that, that piece. So it's not like we're prescribing what will be the thumbnail, what will be the B-roll for each shot. It's more where we're on the wide angle, let's do a bunch of the wide stuff and see how much of the script we can cover. Then let's switch to the macro, see how much of the script we can cover with that. We sort of go back and forth until we, we get our creative looks here and there. So it's a little less formulaic and a little more freestyle. I guess we couldn't talk about gear without including the cherry on top in the studio, which would be like the ultimate piece of gear. And that would be our camera robot. It's not necessary. It's definitely not necessary, but it's a lot of fun. We've talked a little bit about having a slider to add some dynamics, some movement to your shot. This is one of the things we've added on top as something that's specifically hard to replicate. So if you've ever seen one of those robots in like a car factory that just like picks a car up and moves it around, it's one of these, but with some software and an Xbox controller. So it can do things with a camera that a human arm can't do. Like, Andrew, you wanna run the move we just ran? And it can repeat those moves with expert precision over and over again. And we like to design moves around it. So the beginning of the S21 Ultra video, as we descend upon the phone and the time of day changes and the background lighting changes, we repeated that shot on the robot multiple times in different environments to fade between them. That's the type of fun we like to have with this robot. So anyway, that's about it for shooting. Just wanted to include that. Next up, let's talk editing. So that's it. That's just been a quick sneak peek of one of the lessons. There's a lot more to it, uh, but if you're interested, if you wanna watch it, there's a link below. Click that link and join me. See you in class.